So you're going to talk to us about Power Apps portals today, and I understand you're working on a portal apps project right now, huh? Uh, quite a few of them, actually. Yeah. We'll talk about what we'll talk about now is the kind of need for those. There's a lot of things that Power Apps can do, and a lot of it comes down to not wanting to license every citizen in your county, for example, or every student, for example. So finding those use cases where you can build these, these beautiful Power Apps, but have it as a website uh, is where kind of Power Apps portals really fits in. It's, it's, a, it's a most common request that the Power Apps team had for a long, long time. So on the Power Apps portal side, there's a few requirements before you begin. Uh, it does require the data has to be stored in the Dataverse. So it's, you know, Common Data Services is the old name, or Dataverse is the new name. And some of the neat things it can support is it has internal providers like Azure AD, for example, for logging in, or it has external providers like LinkedIn or Twitter or Facebook, or even like a local login provider as well that you can actually house all the logins in. That's one of the cool things about portals is it kind of resembles a little bit like WordPress, but allows you to interact with these similar to model-driven apps, model-driven forms, and Dataverse within a few seconds. Matter of fact, I'm going to build one live for you in a few minutes, and you'll see how fast it is to get down to the row-level security easily here. So these perfect use cases that we find is, well, imagine you're a tax accountant or an insurance company. And you want to get find out the latest tax information for all of your customers. Now you can build you know forty fifty thousand dollars building out an app. You can build out a power app, a Canvas app, for example, and then license all two thousand of your customers. Or alternatively, a power app portal might make sense. In this case, rather than have to license every single person, I'm basically licensing a capacity for those users to come in. So you license it by 100,000 views and then by uh, batches of 100 logins. Now those logins can come in and out in a day. So you might be the login today. I might be the login tomorrow. I can log in and out in one day. Now the, the tools of the trade, there's two tools that you're gonna really be in uh, most frequently. One is the portal management tool. And then one is the portal designer, where you'll do your front end kind of development and coding. Those are the two main tools to trade. And of course, you'll be in Dataverse quite a bit, living in there, building your forms out and all that. So with that now done, let's go ahead and go out and build one together. So the scenario we're going to do is I am a school system, the Pawnee school system, and I want to go ahead and allow Todd to register for, for football and for you know the 4-H club and all those kind of clubs go ahead and risk the registration. So I have a, a really simple example we're gonna use for that. So I'm gonna hop out real quick, if I can find my screen, there we go, all right. So again, the tools the trade will use, you'll see I already have built a portal. So I can, you can build the portal right here under portal from blank. That's how you'll actually build out your system. And let me kind of keep this open, Todd. And if you have any like questions that are like uh, burning at a certain time, please feel free to interrupt me also. So uh, you know, I do have one back to the licensing that I've heard people ask me before about the logins. Um, I'm sure everybody would like to know. You get 100 logins a day, you said, right? Right. What happens if I log in today and tomorrow? Am I counted twice or just once? Well, it's daily logins. So if you come in and out the same day, count as one login, but at the minute, at minute the uh, midnight strikes, it's a second login at that point. Gotcha. So you get 100 of those daily logins a day for that, for that um, $200, basically. So when I think about it, Microsoft's hosting your web server. And if I was to host a server in Azure, put my app out there for WordPress or whatever it might be, I'm probably around that same dollar figure. It's when you get into the thousands. I mean, we have, we have some customers that have, uh, for example, we did a, a COVID application for registering for COVID relief for my county. And we had about 20,000 applications we received in, in a matter of a few weeks. So in that case, we were licensing the entire county of 1.2 million people but we knew 1.2 million people were gonna come in. Mm -hmm. Now, it's not a hard limit. Microsoft doesn't like shut you down hard at a certain point, but they are scaling that server accordingly to the amount of logins they think you're going to have. So if you have 101, it's not like all of a sudden you're, you're hardcore shut down, but you might get some slowdowns, you might get some, some weirdness that occurs after that. Hopefully that answers your question, Todd, or others' questions as well. That and most of the related questions to it as well. <laughs> All right, cool, because we, we definitely hit that mark in the county where we, we announced the COVID application relief and we got above what we licensed and they still, but then when we got up much above it, it definitely started slowing down to where we got some timeouts. 
So uh, I would start the application by hitting portal from blank. Each each environment in Power Apps can have one portal. Now that one portal can have multiple websites underneath it. So you can, and you can actually custom brand each website, have your own little Vanti URL and all that. So what I do next, next is I'll actually add the Pawnee school system here. So I'm gonna ahead and open it up and let me go cancel that. And it looks like, it looks like this, there we go. This is my my Pawnee school school, and this is this is just out of the box. The only thing I've done is I changed this little title right here, and I added a few web pages. But pretty much, it's a pretty nice looking website in a few seconds. Uh, after I do that, I'm going to go ahead and create a new page, and I want to go ahead and allow you to list what registrations that you have registered for. Top is my goal here. So, oh, and it is caching right now. Looks like there it goes. All right, so I'll call this, uh, you know, uh, my here program registrations. All right, and I'll give it a nice, nice uh, little URL stub here of program dash reg, something like that. Now, it, at this point, you'll see you have a whole list of components. You can actually interface with CSS. You can write code here. If you are a coder, you can absolutely do that. But in my case, I'm just going to drop in a list right here. Now, this list comes from a Power Apps Dataverse. So in this case, if I go and select list, it's going to drop it in. It's going to ask, well, where do you want to get your list from? I'm going to create a brand new one. And I'm going to go ahead and call this one registrations. All right. And I'm going to look for my registration table inside of uh, Dataverse. Can I have two of them here somewhere? It's that darn alphabet always eludes me. There we go. There we go. And in just a few seconds, when I point to my view here, I've got a view called, oh, I think that's it. Okay, active registrations. As soon as I do that, you're going to notice it will go ahead and, and refresh the screen in a moment. You have to have the watch out in the bottom right here. The bottom right, it will go from uh, saved to saving to saved. And then there we go. So now I'm able to see all the registrations I have up there. I can go and do a browse website here. And in a few moments here, we'll see our new web page. Okay. And power, I think it's been a little bit sluggish on the browse. Now, when you hit browse, it is purging the cache, reloading the cache to the website can be peppy. This, this process has been a little bit sluggish today. So I'm gonna go back over here again and just hit a control refresh. And there is a uh, new pro uh, program registrations. Here we go. And we're seeing that the, the, the same thing I have in Dataverse, you can see the same thing there that I have in a model driven application, just a simple listing of, of this. And the view we're seeing here was created in, in the Dataverse also, in the table in the Dataverse. So if I wanna modify this, I can create a customized view for this. I can do filters, I can do uh, sorting, whatever I wish to do. But now I wanna make sure that I'm the only one that can see my own records. You're seeing I have Barbara Jones, Cha-Ching, and Chuck Sterling in here. I wanna make sure that Brian's the only one that can see Brian's records. And that's where the real power in this comes. So I'm gonna go back over here again. This is the application called Portal Management. And when you create a portal, this shows up in your listing of applications. So I'm gonna create a new entity permission. This is where I'm basically saying there's a relationship between a registration and a person that's making that registration. So I'll hit this new registration button and I'll call this just a uh, program reg, okay? And I'll go ahead and select my entity. Okay, of course, my daughter picks right now to start playing piano. She always does that when I'm on calls or recording. All right, looking for a registration. It's there better it than an electric guitar, Brian. Uh, that's true. Or my, <laughs> my also. There's my portal right there. So I can, have, again, I can have multiple websites here, but I have this just one. Now, the scope is pretty important here. The scope is asking us, well, how do you want to, how do I get from a registration to a person? Is this a global permission that applies to everybody? Is it a contact level permission, a row level security to where Todd can only see his own record? Or more importantly, is it an account permission where anybody at Todd's company can see any of his registrations as well as any of the other employee at his company? So that, that's pretty useful where you might have you know, 10 people all registering for this that you want them all to be able to see each other's, but nobody else is at the companies. I'm gonna do a contact level, and then it's gonna ask me, well, how do I get from a contact to a registration. Now this is in Dataverse, I've created a lookup for that registration to go to the contact. That is the name of the lookup right there. And it was created automatically when I created that Dataverse piece. Now I'm gonna specify what kind of rights you have. I'm just gonna go ahead and check them all for the time being, but normally you would not be that uh, generous. I'll hit save. And then 
where does this role apply to? In this case, I have a web role already created and it's called web user. All right, so I'm now done. Uh, I now have, after I save this, you'll notice that I now have row level security turned on that easy. It's, it's a little tricky at first. And I do have a video just dedicated to this, a little bit more elaborate. So when I hit refresh now, you'll notice in a moment that now, all right, I may hit the, oh, I'm, oh, I know the problem. I'm not, I am signed in right now. Okay, well, for some reason it's being a little, little oh, I know the problem. So when I went through this process of creating this list, the part I skipped intentionally at the time was I forgot to go over to permissions oh, and on this individual list right here, I can go through and say, enable entity permissions. And by checking that box, I can also turn on search if I wanted to, but by checking this box right here, it's going to say, all right, I'm gonna lock down this, this, this list here and you can only see your own records. Again, watch that saved here. I click outside the white box, goes to saving, then goes to saved again. You can also, by the way, turn on, hey, I wanna be able to create new records. And what form do you wanna to point to? I'm gonna to point to a web page I've already created and it's called the new program registration. There we go. I can also do deletes and I'll do an edit, same exact thing. I'll go ahead and do an edit with that same web page. New program registration. Oh, that's under edit registration. There it is. So when I'm all done, I think that's it at least, I'll go ahead and hit browse one more time. Again, it's going to purge the cache, reload the cache in a few seconds, hopefully. There, okay, it, it did do its thing. I'll go back here and refresh this again. Okay, there we go. I have my create button now. I'm only seeing my own record. I can also go through and edit and delete that record as well. And anything I do in here, if I hit create, for example, uh, now, a few things about the create. This is the form I've already created. Again, it take about, about two minutes to create this. What program I'm registering, registering for? I'm registering for the yearbook club. I could default this to my name, and I would default this to my name, but in my case, I have not wired this form up to do that. Any kind of special request you have, I'll hit submit. And then once I hit submit, we're routed back. Oh, let me go back to my program registrations. And now we're seeing two registrations, okay? And again, you can delete it. All that wiring is all done for you automatically. And the cool thing about all this is as I do this, if I go back over to this application right here, this is the model driven app. As I make these changes, it shows up automatically in my model driven app also. So everything holds each other's hands. You see Brian K here, Rear Book Club, and there's Brian K and football. Those all match up to what we're seeing right here, Rear Book and football. And as I go through and delete that record, all right, kill that record there. Inside of the model driven app, which is which is which can be in Canvas, could be model driven. You see that got that record got axed there also. So all these things all hold hands together and sing sing kumbaya. Uh, there's some really neat things you can do with this though, but it's a really neat way of scaling Dataverse out to tens of thousands of people. One of the strategies we had to do to kind of kind of when we had that COVID application, the CARES Act money. We had to make sure that we didn't announce it to everybody on the same day. We would, we would announce it to, it was kind of slow roll, it announced it on social media, then we did it to the uh, some other people, and then we actually did a press release. So we didn't want a million people all hitting the servers at one time. But at one point, we had close to 400,000 views in one day, and it held up strong. And, and, my, and our app held up strong also. What we did not want was a healthcare.gov scenario where the, the, in the, in, in Florida had some really bad problems with the unemployment website crashing and crumbling. This held strong uh, and, uh, and thanks to help, help of Microsoft also, we were, we were head ready ahead of time. So we were scaled appropriately and it worked out really, really well. Todd, I think I've got 30 seconds left. I hit the timer. That was great. You're all good. I was pretty brief at the beginning today, so we have the time for a little little chat. the The other thing that I noticed about what's on your screen right now is when whenever you're building a solution, right? This like this, great. You collect the data, but people need to get it, and they need to get it quick, right? Boom! Right at the top, export to Excel, right there. Yes. So. This is more than I just want to stuff. point it out because it maybe people didn't understand that was just built into this solution too. There's run report, attach a flow to it when an item lands in this list, et cetera, et cetera. Your extension points off these are identical to if you built a Canvas app or your own web app. That's what's brilliant about the Dataverse, right? Is I build it one time. If I go over to my data tables here and I go to tables and I look for that registration table, mm -hmm. if I if I modify this, uh, there it is right there. 
if I go ahead and make any changes to this, if I go over to my views here and I say, I want to sort it a different way, for example, mm -hmm. this is how I actually modify portal, model-driven, and even a Canvas app if you wanted to. So if I want to put special requests now in here, for example, so mm -hmm. I click on that, and I hit save, oops, save, and hit publish. All right, and it's a few seconds. All right, come on. It never, it's always fast until you have to, you're trying to do a web, web meeting, right? Mm -hmm. All right. So <laughs> uh, normally, you would see a, well, that I, Yeah, there. it shows up right away, though. That's the point. A couple clicks, yeah. drag this over to here, click, click, and now it's on your website. There's my, there's my uh, special request there. And likewise, over here, in a few moments, it will also refresh this. I may have to go ahead and, and browse the website again to get the latest cache. But oh, there it is, extra lemonade. So there we go. So now we're seeing on all those pieces, I change it in one location, Dataverse, and mm -hmm. every application that's consuming it will automatically change also. I can't remember the last time I worked with an app like that, quite honestly, in a long time, if ever. I have one more question for you. So you mentioned you built 20 or so of these, maybe more. I've only stood up a portal about five times, and it's been a couple months since I did it. I'm curious, how long does it take to stand up a portal nowadays? I know you so, did this one in advance. Is it still yeah. a couple hour process? The most interesting example was, all right, if I go over to my county here, this was um, this was a, a real live example. Oh, I'm not gonna make that government. Okay, that's fine. This is my county. And for my county, we were, they were looking at, they had to distribute this CARES Act money, right? And again, this was, this was, this is a very basic website here, mm -hmm. but I can see my login here. I, I'm not, not seeing any of, my, any of my applications right now. So in their case, they were looking at, they had the care, they had millions of dollars about to hit their accounts. They had to get out to the citizens and they had to do this really, really quickly. Remember how, how crazy COVID was early on? So in their case, they were looking at, uh, they were getting quotes for like four to six months to stand up a portal like this. We were able to knock this out in about a weekend. So to get the beta out in a weekend and they were live within a week. So it's, it's, you can get these out pretty quickly. Now this is a very basic one here. It's, mm -hmm. it's doing a very little stuff here. And you'll, you'll notice the logins are actually shut down right now. But when, when the CARES Act money was around, we had logins for, they can actually sign up for their own account. They can register for their own account. They can do, they can actually have multiple languages here also. So when I sign in here, because we're in Florida, one of the common things we wanted to do is want to make sure that we, we, we speak their own language. So down at the bottom, we can actually select Spanish. You can select you know, whatever language you wish there. But it has a whole bunch of cool stuff inside there. Outstanding. And you built it so fast to help people out in a real tangible way. Yeah, awesome. and they, they can take the time. Now, the language behind all this, by the way, you, you have a whole bunch of different language, but the language is to actually make this website really look good. And this one does not look really, really good because it, it was a weekend of work, right? But the language there is, is liquid, and it's the same one that Shopify uses and mm -hmm. a few other platforms use. So mm -hmm. you can make this look really, really slick. This grid that you're seeing right here, that's just out-of-box native, but you can customize that however you want. Do you do your own for each loops and make it look a lot cleaner? Fantastic. Yeah, Liquid's not too hard to work with either. I got a chance to do that a couple times on these portals recently. Awesome. Very good. Thanks for sharing that with us. And what a great story to help people out with COVID to build something in the course of a weekend. And, and now people are getting their relief. That's great. More community, right, Brian? Amen. Not just the Power Apps community, the whole Florida community there. That's great. Cool.